The historical trauma that I am most familiar with and most um, connected to, I guess, would be the Indian boarding school experience. And my grandparents actually met at a boarding school in northern Minnesota. They were of a, a generation that really, as, as my uncle used to tell me, had no choice. And the government um, really got into the boarding school business after the Civil War. There had been boarding schools before that, but large amounts of federal money going into the system is what really made it happen nationwide. Assimilation as um, as kind of the foundation for the boarding school system was actually something that was considered quite progressive for its time after the Civil War when um, a former Army officer, um, Colonel Pratt, actually thought that in working with American Indian prisoners, he felt that they could learn to read and write, they could learn to assimilate, to fold themselves into larger society. And so instead of actually physically um, decimating Indian populations, um, this was supposed to be a, a nicer way of dealing with things. It did take a lot of money to build a boarding school system in America, and they did it actually fairly quickly. Certainly, he could not have done this without the tremendous support and lobbying of other people and other organizations in this country. It was um, churches and suffragist movements, literacy groups, women's temperance groups. They were um, There were many people who were um, who were supporting this. And so the removal of children from their homes and the, um, the placement of them in a school far enough away that they wouldn't be able to get home to visit and their parents wouldn't be able to see them very often was part of the purpose of the Indian boarding school system. As part of assimilation into larger American society, they were not allowed to speak their own native language. They were um, not allowed to wear their clothes or their hair in the way that they had. They had to be changed physically into, um, into something that would be an imitation of larger, more dominant society in America. The curriculum was not the same as in regular public schools, and the children were not well-educated. Assimilation was the was the the first of like a three-prong approach and so the second um, and in order of importance in curriculum too would have been preparation for a job or a profession or um, what their lives would be once they finished school if they finished school which many did not and so reading writing academic things then was third in priority and so the education um, most children received was it was not only um, different from regular education, but it was it was inferior. It, it was necessary to try to undo everything, to remove everything that was that was native, that was Indian about the children, and then replace that with something else. Well, some experiences were very, very bad. Not everything was bad all the time, as my relatives told me. But at the same time, that, um, that rupture of, of family and community um, created, created real challenges as far as being able to pass the time-honored ways of, of, of knowing the world, of, of teaching and learning of native worldviews and tribal beliefs and practices. If they returned home and if they survived, they had been brought up without the, the ways of passing knowledge down that generations before them had had. It, it was not only that the children who had been at boarding school were returning to some type of vacuum. They were bringing their own problems that had developed while they were at school with them. And so there were many social problems that they were, they were going to have to try to live with and deal with. And then, you know, perhaps raise their own children who at really um, critical points in their life might be removed from home too. And that is what happened with my family for a couple of generations. As my uncle wanted so much for me to, to know that it was not his mother's choice, that people had no choice. 
something that is at the foundation of intergenerational trauma for the boarding school families is that there is a there's a long road back and I don't know if we I don't know if we ever actually will get all the way back, you know, to, to the strength of the families that was there before. We certainly recognize this and we want this and we work on it, but how do you do this without the, the tools that are necessary to do so?